You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign Mary. Hello guys, Survival Tech Nord here. Quick video response to Armed Rogue and her video entitled ICOM Handheld Radio Distance 365 Survival Number 111. Now I can't help but get excited when I see other people or channels getting involved in comms. Especially when channels are sharing the results of their tests so that we can share what they've learned and other people who might have the same questions can learn from those results. So this is my feedback to her video and her comms range test. I hope that the feedback can be useful and help them to increase the effective range of their comms uh, during their next test. All right, let's get started. In Armed Rogue's video, they were using UHF radios from ICOM, the preferred choice of insurgents all around the world and a good choice for UHF communications. I have to make a couple of assumptions here because that information was uh, not listed in the video. But it's an ICOM radio. There's two versions of it, one for VHF and one for UHF. I believe the one she's using is for UHF. She also mentioned that it was pre-programmed. I believe she means reprogrammed for GMRS. Repurposing surplus equipment is always a great way to get yourself into reliable communications gear. Excellent choice, Armed Rogue. So the test was also carried out with one person standing inside a building and the other driving in a car. So how could Armed Rogue have improved the test results? The easiest way to improve the result of the test would have been for Armed Rogue to stand outside during the entire test. And we can see in the video that she figured that part out already. So unless you're in a life-threatening situation, it's very important to stand still when using VHF, UHF, or SHF radios. The signal from your radio is affected by the structures around you. If you have the chance to stand still without putting yourself in any danger, then the signal received on the other end will remain consistent. When you start moving, especially indoors, the fading effect will become much more apparent to the person you're trying to communicate with. This is also true for the car. If the car were to stop moving while he's trying to talk to you, while both of you are using these handheld walkie-talkies, the fading effect would be very much reduced. Moving back indoors, if it's not possible for you to get outdoors in the clear open space, then try to move to the highest place in your house, for example, uh, a balcony, an attic, something like that. There's also mechanical ways to improve the range of these radios. Inside the car, the most important thing is to get the antenna outside. A low-cost and efficient way of doing that is using this MFJ window mount to move your antenna from the radio to outside the car. It's pretty stealthy and it doesn't cost that much. They're also pretty simple to make at home if you have the right tools. And the radio that Armed Rogue herself was using could benefit also from an external antenna. Either a base station antenna on top of the house or an increased length antenna mounted directly on her radio. And of course, I've saved the best for last. By adding a length of wire at the antenna connector of your radio, it's called a counterpoise. You can make your antenna more efficient by giving it the other half of the dipole that's missing. This doesn't cost anything and will give you the single biggest performance gain for your radio at the lowest cost. Pretty freaking cool, huh? I'm sure you'll have some questions and as usual, I'm happy to help. If you learned something from this video, found it useful or entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. And if you find it in the goodness of your heart to share, I would very much appreciate that. Finally, make sure to watch Armed Rogue's original video and give her a thumbs up as well. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.